Hi everyone, my name is Umberto Malapelle. I'm the chair of Predictive Molecular Pathology Laboratory at the Department of Public Health from University Federico II of Naples. And today I'm really happy to be here with you, try to discuss some aspects about the application of a liquid biopsy in solid tumors. Starting from the basic aspects, like as the possibility that we have to extract some biomolecules from body fluids, in particular from bloods. From several years, if you see in the anatomic pathology department, uh, we have the possibility to extract nucleic acids from many biosources, like as histological samples, cytological ones, and now also liquid biopsy. So liquid biopsy doesn't mean only blood, but all the body fluids uh, can represent a source of uh, liquid biopsy because you are able to extract from these body fluids some molecules like as circulating free DNA, and then a part of circulating free DNA is represented by circulating tumor DNA. And then you can have also other type of biosource like as circulating tumor cells, uh, other type of nucleic acids like as uh, circulating free RNA, macro RNA, long non-coding RNA, and so on. And in particular, you can have also extra vesicles and you can extract also extra vesicles cargo to analyze the molecular landscape of any patient, so of any patients with any solid tumors. So the three pillars of the application right now of liquid biopsy in clinical practice are for sure represented by no small cell lung cancer, in particular in the advanced stage, breast cancer, and metastatic or rectal cancer. For no small cell lung cancer, by using liquid biopsy, uh, right now you can test all the clinical relevant mutation that you can have in a no small cell lung cancer, like as EGFR, KERAS, BRAF mutation, ALK, ROS1, RET, fusions, met exon 14 skipping, and so on. In the landscape of breast cancer, today we are able to test in clinical practice pietric and ease mutation and also ECR1 mutation. And ECR1 mutation detection in liquid biopsy are really fascinating topics because give us the possibility to have a dynamic use of liquid biopsy in clinical practice because we can test our patients. If it's positive, we can proceed with the treatment if are negative, we can retest during the time our patients to verify if we have the appearance of DCR1 as resistance mutation to aromatase inhibitors, previous treatments, but now represents today also in a positive predictive biomarkers for oral cell therapy. And in the context of metastatic or rectal cancer, we can use liquid biopsy to redefine and rechallenge treatment strategies by using an example, a monoclonal antibody direct against EGFR. So this means that after a first line of treatment or after a line of treatment with monoclonal antibody direct against EGFR, if our aim is to introduce these strategies of treatment before to introduce these strategies, we need to test in liquid biopsy our patients to verify if we have the appearance of mutant clone in Keras or in NRAS. So these are the three pillars in clinical practice, but this is not the only room for liquid biopsy in general, because in the case of solid tumors, in any solid tumors, we can use liquid biopsy to test the molecular landscape for our patients. And as we have discussed previously, we need to uh, pay attention on the fact that liquid biopsy doesn't mean only ctDNA, but we can extract other type of uh, biomolecules and the other type of uh, biological entities like as circulating tumor cells. And one of the final aim of liquid biopsy community is to transfer the knowledge that we have acquired in the metastatic setting also in the early stage until to cancer interception. So this means that we are trying to transfer all the knowledge that we have acquired during these years in metastatic setting also in the minimal residual disease setting to use liquid biopsy to monitor the evolution of minimal residual disease in bloodstreams, and then in the early stage mutation detection until to cancer interception. So in this last case, this means that uh, our aim is to use in future liquid biopsy to test the mutational landscape in a general population. And when we detect any mutation, we are able to uh, follow up the evolution of this mutation during the time to verify if there is a connection with the presence of any tumors in a people that we are analyzing that become in a patient. So this is the final aim of liquid biopsy. And if you see the third statement paper of International Society of Liquid Biopsy, you can see that this is the tracing time evolution of the application of liquid biopsy in solid tumors patients. So on the overall, this is the power of liquid biopsy. And uh, as an key message, we need to pay attention that liquid biopsy is not in contrast with tissue-based analysis. 
but the main power that we can retrieve from the information, biological information point of view, is the possibility to combine information that we can retrieve from tissue and liquid biopsy to integrate this information at the same time to define better the diagnosis, the prognosis, and the treatment outcome of our patients. So thank you very much.